G'day. Today I'm making up a turret stop for my lathe carriage. Uh, it's a six position stop, uh, which means that you can change tools, go up to a stop, wind back, change another tool, change to another setting, and so on. So it gives you a bit of depth control. Like any good general, I'm trying to prepare to fight the last war. Uh, I was doing a little bit of this sort of repetitive stuff and thought there must be an easier way. Uh, having made it, I'll probably never use it again, but you know, it's a, it's a fun little project anyway. So uh, this is part one. Uh, part two will do with the, um, the making up the bracket to fit it to the lathe and, and all that sort of thing. This, is, this part is just making up the bits. I'm starting out with this piece here. Uh, it's steel. It's only, uh, what's that, 13 and a half or so millimetres thick, but it is three inches in diameter. This presents a couple of problems for me. One is that I haven't got any three inch diameter stock. The closest I've got is actually a bit of 90. And so here I've machined that down, ready to use for that part. But there's a problem there too, in that the outside of that is knurled. There are my knurling rolls, and as you can see, they don't actually fit across the diameter. Um, so, you know, I'm limited on these to something like just a bit, about, let's say two inches, a two inch diameter knurl. So here I've got three, so I'm going to have to use this as a push knurl uh, and, and basically push that into the part. Um, not a terribly nice thing to do. Um, I've got a centre there and so I'm going to be um, supporting that well just so that it doesn't try and pop out of the, the chuck. The other thing is that if you look at the, the, the knurl tool here, um, I've got this, it's about quarter inch thick land there. And so what I'm also going to have to do is put the knurl on the front part here um, and, and, and put some relief on the back just so that I've, I've got room for that, um, the, the side bracket there to, to, to clear. I, I would have preferred to make that part the other way around. I would have preferred to have that on my stock, but I'm gonna need that clearance there for putting the, um, the knurl on. Uh, so I've got four millimeters plus I've got another three for parting off. And then I'm just gonna have to turn that round in the chuck and put that, uh, that recess in. That recess isn't critical, it's just sitting there, but it would have been nice to be able to do it in pretty much one shot and then turn it round, grab those, or grab that diameter in the, in the, the, the chuck and just face off that, uh, that front bit there. Here I am, prepped for knurling, slightly different camera angle this time. Uh, so I've drop, I'm dropping my speed down a little bit. Uh, I've got things lubricated. Normally I lock the, um, the cross slide and move the carriage for my knurling if I have to do a long knurl. This one's the width of my knurls, which is one reason that um, I made it this, this width. But now this time I'm locking the, the carriage longitudinally so I can just feed in with the, the crank. So this is the perils of, of having a shed full of mystery metal. Uh, I originally was going to just plunge this in, but I think this is actually a bit of alloy steel, some 4140 or something like that. And so uh, what I eventually worked out was the, was the, uh, the way to get a knurl in there was to actually come up to the edge, press into the edge uh, and get a knurl and then pull it across um, the, the face there. And because it was only doing a little bit at a time, it was able to form the knurl. So as you can see, it's reasonably well defined. Once I uh, put that on a wire wheel and, and you know dress that up, that uh, you know get all the loose bits out, uh, chamfer the corners, that should be fine. I've got my knurl on the outside. I've got my step down there, and I've got the the centre bore. So I've done basically this bit and that bit and that bit and that bit. I now need to part off counterbore the back part there, and then over to the mill to put the um, the holes in and the and the, and the flats in. I'm doing this uh, top piece now. Um, and this is basically a cup shape. The bearing areas are on the outside there. Um, that's a locating boss to locate into, into that and that just has to fit inside here. So it's, it's not as, um, it's, it's not all critical. Uh, that length needs to be reasonably precise, but that's why I'm leaving the, the, the thing that it turns into 
till the end so I can adjust that if I need to if I'm slightly over. Um, this is actually four and a half so I can I can take a little bit off that if I need to just to um, to get things um, snug. I've started here I've got my blank turned up I've put that um, front lip on I've put the the side on um, I'm going to have to turn this around, put this into a four jaw chuck, centre it up on that diameter and then do the rest of that but for the moment that's alright. I'm now going to take out the inside, the inside is nothing special, it's just for clearance mainly. Um, so that's just going to be a straight you know, boring operation just to take that material out. The reason for all this uh, concern about weight is that all up uh, I estimate this thing is going to weigh around about half a kilogram. Now if I left everything solid uh, it'd probably be three times that and I don't really want that hanging off the side of the lathe so uh, I'm, I'm trying to make this as light as I can just to uh, save myself that, that extra weight. I've uh, end for ended the uh, inner piece here, treated up on the fore jaw and turned it down. You can see a slight witness mark there, that's actually the cutting from one direction meeting up with the cutting from the other direction. When you run your finger over that you can hardly feel anything so it's, it's pretty much spot on and that's and you know that's mainly because of the um, you know the, the 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 tearing of the metal for want of a better term. Uh, I've put the spigot on the front here this is the locating spigot for that bit and there it is it's all it all lines up so that's all good happy with that. Uh, I've got an arrow here because I've noticed I put a ding in my knurl uh, but that's okay because I've got to take six or put six flats on here so that'll just be one of those so I'll get rid of that so that's not a problem. What I haven't shown on the, uh, the drawings is fastening this part to uh, this part. So what I propose doing is I'm going to put in my six holes for the um, for the you know length studs but I'm all between those I'm going to put in three holes for a, a, an M5 screw uh, and same here so that I can actually bolt these two together. So I'm going to start off with doing those three because I don't want those breaking through so I've got a, a definite depth for those and then I'll go around again uh, and do the six. Now because I'm actually, I've got three plus the six is nine but I'm actually, uh, because I'm missing a few spots, I'm actually going to set the, um, the, the PCD function up on the, on the DRO for 12 and uh, just try and remember to skip a few. So I've drilled the front plate, what a better term, the PCD function. I've also put some tapped holes in there. I've drilled the back for some clearance holes for the screws to go through. I didn't think about this quite well enough. Um, the, the diameter of the heads on the screws is actually 8.5 rather than 8 so I need to take the diameter of the heads down because otherwise they won't fit. Uh, but other than that, once I've got those done, I'll put those together, bolt that up uh, and then drill through here and then take those out to eight millimeters which is a, a, a clearance size for the for the bolts. That'll be these two bits almost done and from that I can then measure here and work out um, the the housing for it. Here's the uh, progress so far. Um, I've got the, uh, the front drill drilled and um, tapped, I've got the back drilled screws in, uh, clearance hole, they probably don't need to be that big but they are. I'm now up to the housing. Um, it's going to be pretty much a straight boring job on the lathe so there's nothing terribly exciting about that. However what I do want to do is make a teardrop shape first because I need to have something to, to hang my bracket onto. The bracket's unlikely to be interesting because it's individual to the lathe but I need a, a place to uh, hang onto this. Now it's going to be a bolt-on bracket for two reasons. One of them is if I welded a, something on there, um, I could well distort this and as it's better to do the, uh, or easier to do the boring without that on there, um, that's, that's quite a possibility. But this is also uh, 2011 aluminium, uh, which is a free machining grade, which is really nice for machining, but it doesn't weld very well. So rather than weld, I'm going to bolt and, and, and dowel onto here. Now, uh, as I said, I want a teardrop shape. I've centred my rotary table, I've now put a, a centre pop where the, the, the bore is, the virtual bore is going to be um, and as you can see there's a little bit of material hanging off there so I've now um, got that on the centre of the rotary table, I'm going to machine that off, I'll then change the clamps around, machine the other side off uh, and then with a bit of jury poker on clamps I'll then 
um, do the do the radius and that'll fingers crossed give me a, a that that teardrop shape I'm after I'm about to do the, the final cleanup cut out the back there um, two things to note about the setup one is that I'm using four clamps but I'm only using three at any to any to on time so I'm going to remove that clamp after having put that clamp on when I was doing this section of the arc provided that the cutter doesn't move relative to the to the, uh, the center of the, the table it's all good uh, the other thing to note is I've got a bit of aluminium sitting underneath here and this is just so that I'm not cutting into my uh, table uh, I may have to do a little bit of clean up on the on the edge there but that's okay because that's going to be turned off anyway when I when I put it into the lathe but just something to, to bear in mind when doing this sort of thing uh, looks like I've got my right angle here with just a little bit of a flat which is what I was suggesting I was going to get back to the lathe now uh, I'm going to bore that out I'll face that off and bore that out um, dialing something like this this in in, in a forger is not is not terribly difficult you've just got to be careful you don't rotate the the lobe and wipe out your um, indicator but uh, other than that it's uh, it's centered in the in the normal way you would with any other bit of round bar stock because you've got a 90 degree lobe here uh, the tangent points there are the same spot as the um, you know as, as the radius of the the circle uh, if it was more than that for some strange reason uh, then you'd have to do a little bit of jiggery pokery to try and work out where the center was and all that sort of thing but as long as it's 90 or less um, you can just use the outside diameter and dial that in this is the part that i'm doing now um, i've just done a rough bore that just has to be a clearance uh, on the on the cut part here so as you can see that that goes in you know quite nicely what i'm now going to do is is put in this sort of slight shoulder um, that's the bit that the top of that shoulder that sits against and the inside of the shoulder that runs on uh, so I'd like to get that as good as I can um, and it's going to be reversed the exact depth is going to suit you know whatever that is uh, distance between there and, and there um, that's the way it's designed so it's, it's a, going to be a bit of trial and error so I've turned my part around, um, I dialed up on the bore, and so I've got, you know, concentric bore, and then I've bored this out to size, and so that's, that's a nice fit in there, I like that. So there's my part out of the chuck. Um, this bit fits in there quite nicely. The uh, cut goes in the back there, that's a nice fit too. And that all, well, when it's, when it's bolted together, it'll all turn around. Uh, at the moment it's just a little, when I put the, the three bolts in, it's just a little bit stiff, so I need to uh, uh, probably probably take a little bit out of the, um, take a little bit off that, that surface perhaps. But uh, anyway, uh, that's all good. Um, I'll, uh, I'm running out of daylight, so I'll, I'll leave this uh, as it is. I uh, won't we'll worry about the bracket next clip. Uh, and uh, the, the, the tuning and the, and the putting together. So thanks for watching and uh, hope this has been uh, interesting and we'll see you for the next one.